Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a bootable USB flash drive for Windows 10. There are two common ways to do this. The first way is by using Microsoft's media creation tool. All you need is an 8GB or larger USB drive and a good internet connection. The faster, the better. The second way is to use a third-party application to create your bootable USB. For this, you'll need a Windows 10 ISO file, which you can download for free, and a third-party tool. I'll walk you through how to get the ISO file in just a moment. For this tutorial, I'm going to use Rufus. It's easy to use, free, and highly rated. Now let's get started. Method 1, using Microsoft's media creation tool. For this method, I'll be using Microsoft's media creation tool. You can find it by googling download Windows 10 inches and clicking the first result from Microsoft. I'll also put a direct link in the video description below. Once you're on the download page, click Download Tool Now. It's around 80 MB, so it should download pretty quickly. After it's done, just open the tool by double-clicking on it and accepting the license terms. By default, the tool is set to upgrade your current PC, but we want to create installation media for another PC. Before moving forward, make sure you back up any files on your USB stick because they'll be erased in the process. Once you've backed everything up, plug in your USB stick, select Create Installation Media for another PC, and click Next. Now, I'll choose the language, edition, and architecture, 32-bit or 64-bit, of Windows 10. The default settings should be fine, but if you need to customize them, uncheck Use Recommended Options for this PC. If you're not sure of your PC's architecture or need to install Windows on multiple devices, you can select both to cover both 32-bit and 64-bit systems. Keep in mind that selecting both will require more space, so you might need a 16GB USB drive instead of an 8GB one. Next I'll choose USB flash drive as the installation method, select my USB drive and hit next. The tool will now start downloading Windows and creating the bootable USB depending on your internet speed, computer performance, and USB stick. This can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes.
Once it's finished, I'll get a message saying the USB drive is ready. I can also check my USB to verify that the installation files are there and that it's bootable. And just like that, I'm ready to install Windows 10 offline using my bootable USB. Method two, using Rufus. For the second method, I'm using Rufus, a third party tool. But before I run Rufus, I need to download the Windows 10 ISO file. You can get it from Microsoft's website using the media creation tool, just like we did in the first method. The only difference is that instead of choosing USB flash drive, I'll select ISO file and save it to my computer. Once I have the ISO file, I'll head to Google, search for Rufus, and click the first result from the official Rufus website. I'll also include a direct link in the description. I'll download the latest version, which is only about 1 MB. With Rufus downloaded, I'll plug in my USB stick and open the Rufus application. First, I'll select the USB device I want to use. Then, in the boot selection field, I'll choose disk or ISO image and click select. to find the ISO file I just downloaded. Next, I need to choose a partition scheme. There are two options, MBR and GPT. GPT is newer and works best for clean installations on systems without existing partitions. If I'm upgrading from an older version of Windows, I might check my current partition style and choose the appropriate option. Once that's set, I'll click Start. Rufus will warn me that all data on the USB will be erased, so I'll make sure everything is backed up. Then I'll hit OK. And wait for Rufus to finish creating the bootable USB. Once the process is done, Rufus will say ready, and I can eject my USB stick. I now have a Windows 10 bootable USB, ready to install on other computers. And that's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, give the video a thumbs up, share it with anyone you think might find it useful, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more tech support videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.